have prepared a folder of the materials and this is the prompt we were given to work with for their contest. Then Emma saw what Ruby brought to show the class and she thought it was completely unfair. Now, I actually know the book this comes from. I really enjoyed it as a kid. It was all about this girl who felt the need to copy everything else this other girl did and then take credit for it. And I totally identified with the girl who was being copied as a kid. So the fact that I'm so familiar with this prompt actually makes doing a um, an entry for this contest more difficult for me because I don't want to um, be overly influenced by what already exists. I wanna bring something new to the table. So I started some brainstorming and it's very simple and it's the sort of exercise I do anytime I'm developing a comic pitch. So um, we have our prompt and it's a very, I feel like it's very specific because we have some certain, we have some certain things that we know we're dealing with. We have two characters, Emma and Ruby. We have a class and we have um, Emma thinking something is completely unfair. So that puts several restrictions on us already. So the first thing I thought about is what could somebody bring to class that would just be completely unfair other than mimicking what you brought to class already. So I came up with roller skates, a skateboard, the exact same thing as Emma, a kitten, puppy, or pet, the newest kid trend, said like a spinner or something like that, a celebrity relative, a train poodle, her YouTube gold award, her autograph collection, her sketchbook, a cootie catcher. You know, like if she could predict the future. And this is just the beginning of some brainstorming. And then I realized I needed to think about, before I could decide that, I needed to think about what kind of kid is Emma and what kind of kid is Ruby? And what is their relationship? Are they friends? Are they rivals? Are they frenemies? Are they outright enemies? And then I realized before we even get to that, we need to decide if we're going with humans, animals, or anthros, and then what style we wanna draw in. Because often when I'm doing character design, it helps influence, um, it helps influence the sort of story I tell. So we have, um, kind of our characters decided for us in a way. We have two little girls and a classroom setting, so they're young. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my sketchbook and take some notes. And then last night, I realized something that might make for a really good idea because I don't know if I wanna do humans. I draw a lot of humans in my work. I thought, what if I did bugs? So what if we had one of the girls is like a larval caterpillar and the other girl has already turned into a butterfly. That's one way we could go with this. So this would be what, Emma? Emma is the jealous one. And this could be Ruby. So that's one option. Then our setting would be like outside in a garden. And the class could be a mix of insects. So that's one direction we could take that prompt in. So before we settle on characters, it's really good to brainstorm some other options. So this is option one. We can also go with two human girls. And one of the reasons I wanna avoid that is it's already really similar to the girls in the story. Um, and what I may have to do is I may end up having to like check it out of the library, reread it, and then just go in the opposite direction. Or I could just totally embrace it and just do a modernized retelling. So when brainstorming, it is important to take notes on everything because the idea that you really like might be the least likely idea. And since I am a visual learner, it really helps me to take physical notes like this. I use post-it notes, I use my sketchbook. Um, I know some people benefit more from doing it on the computer and that's fantastic and more power to you. 
So um, we can go the human approach or we can go with animals slash anthros. So there's a lot of ways if we went with animals rather than anthros, because anthros would be anthropomorphic. So it'd be like kitten children, right? Wearing cute little clothes, right? So. And I'm just gonna go ahead and skip to the next page. Animal. So if we went animal, we could go under the sea. We could do that sort of school. But if I go too weird, they're not gonna necessarily, because this is like, um, for this contest, it's basically um, a one page. It's really meant to be like a one illustration thing, but I've been doing comics with it because I'm a comic artist. Um, so it's really meant to be uh, visually read very quickly. So they're not gonna necessarily wanna spend a lot of time thinking about it to get it. So I have to go somewhat obvious if I go one of the weird routes. So under the sea, school of fish. Um, so we could go with a collection of, can't do that. Barn, yard, animals, chicks. Wow, cannot spell today. Chicks, ducklings, piglets, or a collection of forest animals and kidlet loves like barnyard animal cutesy animals uh what we used to call it in earth environmental science is charismatic charismatic megafauna collection of forest animals so like raccoons bears possums Wolves, bobcats. So then let's go back to anthro. So anthro would basically just be animal kids acting like human kids. So when you go with the anthro route, um, that's kind of like that cartoon Arthur, for example, you can do a mixed classroom. It doesn't have to actually make um, like ecological sense. It doesn't have to be animals that would naturally be in the same environment or would even have anything to do with one another. Um, so you can have a, you know, a mixed group, but you can't necessarily have so, so what Ruby would have or be doing that would make Emma jealous, um, it wouldn't necessarily be an animal thing. It would be a human thing. And they would wear clothes, but they wouldn't necessarily be fully dressed. And this is a good way to bring in whimsy. Okay, so, so far, um, we have a bug option. We have a couple of human options. We have an anthro option. We have several animal options. So at this stage, it's really good to find someone you can talk this over with um, and maybe brainstorm around these, find some pros and cons. Um, unfortunately, it's just me right now. So what I'm going to do is I will probably wait. And um, when I see Joseph, I'll probably get him to take a look at this for me and brainstorm some of this out. And I'll try to record that so you guys can get a good idea of why that's beneficial. All right, hey guys. So Joseph is here to help me brainstorm my SCWBI contest entry. And I'm gonna read the prompt to you so you know what um, they're, they're looking for kind of, and as you know, from last year, they're not, they don't really have like, I mean, they have a specific size, but you can kind of interpret the prompt however you wish. So, um, the prompt is, then Irma saw what Ruby brought to show the class and she thought it was completely unfair. And here's some of the things I kind of brainstormed earlier in the video. 
So um, what we know from this is that we've got two girls in a classroom setting, so they're probably young. So um, I was uh, trying to avoid um, rehashing the story because I'm familiar with the story. Wow. I'm familiar with the story and that is always kind of a, a danger when you're familiar with the content is that it overly influences what you're doing. So I first thought to like go in a really weird direction. So um, there's always a challenge of like completely unfair, like whatever this one kid ha brings to class, it just has to be like outrageous, right? So um, on in, in terms of like weird stuff, I thought, well, what if they were insects? And then I got to like, well, what if one was a larval caterpillar and the other one had already turned into a butterfly? Like, wouldn't that feel completely unfair if you were just like a little larval caterpillar waiting to turn into a butterfly? No, I don't think that that really fits that way. You don't think? Okay. Um, so then I thought, well, two human girls, we can go the traditional route. And there's two ways to approach that. I can either do the total opposite of what the original did, which means checking the book out of the library, and I'm sure they have it because um, it's kind of a classic in terms of like modern kids books, um, checking it out of the library and rereading it and then just going in the opposite direction as much as possible on everything. Or I could just do an up updated retelling, which is really popular right now. Is everyone else going to be familiar with this book? I have no idea. Okay. I mean, last year's prompt, the one with Chucky, uh, the kid who like he opened his eyes, I didn't know what that was from. So, I mean... There's hundreds of thousands of children's books out there. Right. So I can't really predict whether or not. They're probably more on top of, like, if it was a kid's graphic novel, I would totally know, you know what I mean? Let sure. it be advantage back up. So but it's not. Are they, will know. they probably will know. Um, and what I saw last year is a lot of them went with animals. So that might be a reason to do humans, but I do a lot of human stuff. So maybe having animals would be better for my portfolio. So, um,. I can either do the complete opposite of the original, or I can do an updated retelling, which is really popular right now. Um, and I'm gonna do this as a comic, since I'm a comic artist, and everyone else is gonna be doing kids' books, but because they have that editor from first second, the graphic novel editor Rob in there, I think it's really important for me to like do what I do and not worry about like what other people are doing. And I'm not doing this to win, I'm just doing this to like generate so you said you are going to do it as a comic? I am going like, to do it as a comic. I basically a two-page comic? Yeah, spread, probably. Okay. Um, so I could also go Anthro, where it's animal kids acting human. Um, and with that sort of a, a thing, you have like a mixed group of animals, and it doesn't have to make sense for the animals to be hanging out. So you get like a dog, a bear, a cat, a chicken, right? And that, that doesn't really make sense from like an environmental science story, you know, like that doesn't make sense, but like from a kid lit yeah. point of view, it doesn't we'll do matter. Yeah. Um, and then, so Ruby sh show and tell trick would have to be a human thing if we went anthro and not an animal thing. And then the last option is go animal. And I said, I have to go obvious if I'm going to go weird. So like whatever storytelling I do for this has to be very basic because they've only got two pages to get on board. Yeah, um, that's why I didn't necessarily like that. The butterfly thing, yeah. yeah. Um, so I thought maybe under the sea, like a school of fish, or a collection of barnyard animals, chicks, ducklings, and piglets, or a collection of forest animals, raccoons, bears, possums, wolves, bobcats. And then... Do um, you want to do a fish theme? Not really, because I did yeah, one last year. I was thinking not only because you did one last year, but it also just seems like it's a lot of work. Yeah, well, I mean, any it, because this is a classroom setting, it could very well be a lot of work regardless and that was small the way they staged it in the book is like the two girls are always or almost always up against like a chalkboard so you never see the full class sure. which is a good it's like a good economy of line mm -hmm. but it also means i probably shouldn't use that unless right. i'm going to do like an exact retelling so some of the other ideas i had um i made a list of what ruby could have brought and this is if she were a human, that would be so unfair. Uh, roller skates, a skateboard, the exact same thing as Emma, a kitten, a puppy, a pet. The newest kid trend, so like a spinner or something like that. Uh, celebrity relative, a trained poodle, her YouTube gold award. I was just getting ridiculous, but also that's kind of fitting too. Like, okay, if you were like a nine to 13 year old kid, would that not be super unfair? Um, I mean, I would, 
I like the animal stuff, but I would probably lean more in the direction of something that someone's parents might have had, might have limited access to because of their jobs or something like that. Like... So radium. Yeah. Space rocks I have two, I have three more. Her autograph collection, which I feel like is really kind of a dated thing. Yeah. Her sketchbook, or like a cutie catcher, and maybe she's been like teasing. But see, this requires backstory. Because in my head, she's been teasing Emma with it the whole time. So to bring it for show and tell and to offer to do fortunes for the class would just be like really a mean thing to do. Other than them knowing each other, you can't make a whole lot of assumptions like that. But it so, does seem like the prompt makes it seem like they know each other. In the original story. Are friends or enemies? Right. So I, I, what is their relationship? Friends, rivals, frenemies, or enemies? Um, and then what kind of kid is Emma and what kind of kid is Ruby? So, um, in the original story, Emma is like, has a very distinct personality. She likes to do things her own special way. And Ruby is like so impressed that she copies everything Emma does and it drives Emma up the wall. She hates it. Sure. And as a kid, I really identified with that because I was an Emma. I'm still weird. So it's really awful when people copy the things that I do. Yeah. Cause like I get picked on for it and then someone else does it. And I'm just like, that's not fair. Um, so like, that's another problem with this is I really liked the original story as a kid and I really identified with one of the characters. So I, unless I was doing like a 10 page mini with this, right? Cause like sometimes when you like something too much, you want to go way too in depth. It's hard to pull back. Cause like I had no attachment to last year's prompt and it made it a lot easier to do my own thing with it. So, so you're thinking we need to go Human or human or anthro? Um, I like human and anthro, but not animal because it would require too much explaining. Probably, probably. And then you're thinking they're either friends or enemies. Yes. I'm gonna split the difference and go frenemies. I don't know what friend. A frenemy is like. I would name some names, but yeah. we're not gonna name some names. A frenemy is like somebody who pretends that they're your friend, but they're always trying to one up you. Or they're always talking sure. smack about you behind your back. How old are these kids? I feel like I'm that's assuming a late they're young. Thing. Yeah. So I don't. So I don't foresee okay, people so in elementary not, school having frenemies. Oh, I had frenemies, but um, okay, maybe rivals. Sure. Because that's kind of the vibe I would want to go in. Um, and you were thinking something their parents would have access to. Do you have yeah. any ideas for that? Um, that would impress kids. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what kids get excited about now. It, de it depends. It depends on what kind of kids they are. It depends on how old they are. Because another thing is that whatever, whatever Ruby brought in, it might have only gotten on Emma's nerves. Like no one else might have been impressed. Nobody else might have cared. It might be something sure. that they're both into and no one else likes. Yeah, but how do you explain in that? In two pages. Yeah. That's why I was thinking something like over the top, like a YouTube gold award or some other like. Except that's not going to mean anything to the SCWBI members. It's going to mean something to kids. If kids were actually reading this, it would mean something to them. But then that dates it too. So it needs to be something. I mean, you have to be 13 to have a YouTube account, right? Yeah, but there's so... people nine with YouTube accounts. Or they share with their parents. Maybe like a gymnastics award or something like that. I was thinking something show off and awardy. Oh, but that doesn't really. Mm -hmm. See, with the sketchbook, if they were both artists but Emma's a little bit better of an artist than Ruby is. I mean, one of them is a little bit better of an artist than the other one. So they're both like vying to impress their class. Can See, you read the prompt again? Of course, I, I know. I'm like way, I think like a comic artist. I want to do 10 pages and I've got two. Yeah. Um, then Emma saw what Ruby brought to show the class and she thought it was completely unfair. So we've got a reveal. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did last year too. With the quirky dived into the water and yeah. I think and opened they his eyes. Want you to be able to tell a story in an Yeah, and I, so there basically has to be a reveal. a reveal. Or 
It was like a trick. What if it was like a doll that looked like the other girl? That is so creepy. That's like that's like <laughs> beyond children book creepy. <laughs> That's like I can see a reaction oh, from that. I know that like that would have a very visceral, real react. That's a too real. Doll that's that looks too like real. The other girl. No, an American girl doll, very daintily dressed, that looks exactly like the other girl. Too creepy. <laughs> too creepy. Oh my god. That's too real. That's some reality right there. Um, maybe like a trick. But that requires room to demonstrate. But that could be the reveal. Is to hurt. like when I mean like a skateboarder trick or like a roller skating trick or like it probably should be an animal if she brings like a train poodle or something because that would be cute and it's funny and like who can resist a cute dog or the celebrity relative because that is like totally unfair. Those are both strong. That makes sense. Strong. I'm kind of, but see, okay, then another problem with the celebrity relative is we have to establish, I either have to go with an existing likeness of someone, which I yeah. hate doing, I or you have to way. establish it. With the train poodle, we can do that in two pages because all you have to do is show a poodle doing a trick and people are going to be like, or you could even have like, you go over the top and have him balancing like a ring on his nose and he's standing on a ball, like you can... You can demonstrate that a poodle is a trained poodle faster than you can demonstrate that somebody's a celebrity. So I guess, and trained poodle is not my favorite. Like the doll was weird. That's weird. If this was a comic contest, I would totally go in that direction because comic people appreciate a little macabre weirdness. And I don't know that children's book people would necessarily appreciate that. Um, some depth there though. So then there, I know, there's, a, there's some meat to that. Okay, so, oh, so, okay. I don't like, when it comes to anthros, I don't like showing real animals with anthros. So that nicks. Well, assuming you're doing animals. I always like ducktails and stuff where they have pets, that's super weird to me. Because there's no explanation for why some animals are sentient and some animals are pets. So and that means we're going sure. with Human. This is like doing like those fortunes. Yeah, like I said, assuming you do an animal as the. I think that's the best. Revealed. I think that's the best choice. I also think that's what everyone else is going to do. Yeah, I know, but I mean, that doesn't really bother me because last year at CWBI there were like four barnyard scenes for the Corky's yeah. big reveal thing. I remember. And I'm doing a comic, so like my intention isn't to be like I'm so different you can't even understand what I just did here. I feel like you can also just do a very large version of something. I know that sounds silly, but kids are impressed by big stuff. They are. World's um, largest ball of yarn. Like, I don't I'm know. I'm not saying that. Maybe saying... her mom's a baker and she makes a really big cake or something. Food always speaks to people. Impressive. Also, kids love, like, kids in class, like, food, cupcakes, birthdays were always the best day in class, right? That might be a good... And that's not something that everyone else is probably going to do. Like an ultra fancy cake. That's a good idea. I fancy, fancy. So I'm not trying, I'm, today I'm trying to just kind of hammer down the characters and then do character designs. Mm -hmm. So like, I'll probably sleep on whether or not to do the trained animal or to do, I'm kind of leaning towards the food now though, cause like, then I can do like a big cake reveal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right. Like you also put a little kid in an apron and I'm sure that's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. Also, you know, I love drawing food. Yes. So it's like everything I love. <laughs> I could do, I could like really go out all out and you just make it like ridiculously unfair. So like this big fancy cake, like a cake boss cake with all these like special cake sculpture garbage on it. Mm -hmm. And then a row of like fancy cupcakes all around it. Just like really go over the top. Ridiculous, unfair. Yeah. Okay. So um, I would think Ruby, Ruby's the kid bringing this in and Emma's mm -hmm. the kid who thinks it's unfair. So Ruby to me is kind of show offy. Kind of like fancy, just kind of like pyong pyong, like uptight fancy. Yeah, I would guess so. She's bringing 
a trained poodle or a gigantic. Yeah, cage, she's probably or. rich. So she's got well a little dressed. designer backpack. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Designer shoes, designer kid sneakers, designer kid backpack. Whereas other girl shops at Target. She's just, she's, scenario. she's just like, your other kid is just like your average kid. So she, but I would think she's kind of like a goodie. Like she follow Emma follows the rules in this scenario. So we've really flipped the original story now because in the original story, Emma was kind of like how I am where like just ostentatious and just does whatever yeah. and doesn't really give a, doesn't really follow rules and stuff like that. But now she's like a, a rule follower. So how old are they? I'm going to say elementary school, like fifth grade. I agree. Elementary school makes sense. Wait, fifth grade in many schools is an element. In America. It was in mine. Middle school starts at six, but we can go fourth. I mean, not that it matters. Well, okay. So it also depends on who you're aiming this at. And, um, I mean, picture books extend all the way up to fourth grade. Picture comics like Diary of a Limping Kid, that kind of stuff, are hugely popular with fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Third graders, too. Basically, independent readers really like kids' graphic novels. Sure. So, since I'm doing a comic, I should probably put them at fourth grade. Sounds good. Uh, so, she follows rules. And, you know, Target clothes are really cute. So like that's they have lots of cute stuff, so that's fine. Um follow the rules part I don't know, maybe glasses? I was thinking glasses. But that I feel like this goes along with following the rules stereotypically. Sure. Ow, you are hurting me! We should show her with um what she brought. So she should be holding what she brought. Mm -hmm. It would be really violin. cool. Oh, okay, sure. I was gonna say like a small thick cake, but you know, you hold it. Stereotypically, Asian parents force their fourth grade daughters to learn violin, so why not? Mm. Mm. No, you know what? Let's go with like a guitar. Okay. Okay, so thank you so much for helping me with this. Um, people always comment that they want to know how artists brainstorm and how they think about comics and stuff. And it's hard for me to do that to the camera because mm -hmm. I need that back and forth. So yeah. I really hope that the people watching this video will like, because you don't like, you're, Joseph isn't a comics person. You read comics, but you're not like a comics artist or a comics writer. I don't write any stories. So like, it doesn't have to be somebody who is invested in comics or writing. It can just be someone who's kind enough to listen to you brainstorm. Like I'll bounce stuff off my mom as well. So I think that's another thing people think they have to have is like, oh, but it has to be somebody in my field. No, it doesn't, not at all. I mean, if, it would have been great if I could have like bounced this off like somebody with like a kid in this age group. It's not like you're trying to work out story beats or anything like that. No. So there's nothing technical about this literarily no it's just i mean the hard part is getting an idea into an illustration the hard part isn't plotting it all out or whatever i don't know i mean i was kind of stuck at this i i've been thinking about this for months like in the like since may and I kept coming back to exactly what was in the book. And I was like, I have to get out of my own head. I can't do this by myself. I keep coming back to, so in the book, all I can really remember is she has this big red sparkly headband and these black and white striped leggings. And like, that's all I could see. And I couldn't get out of my head to brainstorm. So thank you. Um, so next, I'm gonna show you guys some character design, but we're gonna head on upstairs back to my drafting table. All right, guys, so I am back upstairs and ready to get cracking on my character designs. So we said elementary school, fourth grade. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a design in my base style and then um, I may tweak it as necessary. 
I know my work tends to skew way too anime for a lot of people. So I'm starting with a basic rectangle. And now I have a basic wire form done. So I'm gonna use this as a reference. So we've got Emma here. And then we'll do Ruby here. And like I said, this is just sort of a base to get us started. And some people like to do multiple iterations of a character. I will kind of do it until it feels right. And sometimes, you know, you have a really clear idea in your head of who you're designing. And sometimes it takes a long time to find them. And like I've mentioned in other videos, I like sketching using color pencils. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create sort of a human template and then I'm going to tape tracing paper on top and do my designing on that. And that way, if I mess up, I don't have to draw a whole bunch of like, you know, base figures. I can just remove the tracing paper and continue designing. And I know that designing characters in like in a sketchbook traditionally is, I mean, there's probably, it's probably more efficient to do it if you're comfortable doing it in Photoshop or in Manga Studio or any sketching app Procreate, I guess. But I still think best with a traditional pencil in my hand. So that's how I go about doing character designs. And in the end, you have to use the methods that work best for you and help you do your best work. And for kids, their legs, especially, especially um, Ruby, her legs are really long. So something we discussed off camera was um, since we got rid of the trained animal element, I can also do uh, anthro designs if I want. And uh, then I can just decide between the two, which I prefer. So I'm gonna do the human designs first, and then I'm gonna do the anthro designs. So I'm gonna go grab some tape, tracing paper and some tape. And unless you're doing this for a class assignment, this is for your own reference. So don't really worry about it looking um, appealing or attractive or impressive. It only needs to be good enough for you to use it. Of course, it also needs to be tight enough that you can understand what you drew and for it to be usable. So keep that in mind, however, different schools have different expectations for how tight if you're doing this um, for a character design or a comic assignment different schools have different expectations of how tight they want uh, the end product to be so you should definitely do it to your school specifications so i need to pull up some reference anytime i'm designing characters i find it really helpful to have some reference. So, um, like I had discussed, uh, she would probably wear a Target and she would dress in more designer kids' clothes. So, I'm gonna pull up the Target website. And clothing can be a great way for you to um, sort of demonstrate or show character without um, having to use words to do it. I mean, people express themselves through their clothes all the time. So it's a very normal way. Let's see, so kids clothing, kids, 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 come on. 
Oh my gosh, too many options. I just want to look at the whole thing because I don't know yet how she's going to dress. What kind of kid is she? And I wish I could dual screen this and show you guys. Oh, how cute. They have like an outfits category. That's so cute. Go you, Target. And I'm going to have to do some thinking about what would constitute a luxury brand for a kid. Oh, that's a cute outfit. So I found this outfit that has like a cat bomber jacket with little cat ears on the hoodie. I would have totally worn that. That's so cute. And jeans and probably sneakers. Cute. Oh, no, those no, it's like weird open toe. No, we're gonna draw something else on her. So it's a jean jacket. And remember, I have the reference up on my, actually, I bet Pinterest would know what designer kids clothes looks like. Except not so much. Oh, that might be good. So while inspiration strikes, we're gonna go with a boat neck and I think three quarter length sleeves. And this might be an instance where I end up tossing this design because it's already a little, a little much, a little young. But we'll see it to completion and then we'll decide. With lace up booties and I think a beret. We'll just like, I guess we're just gonna like make her the quintessential 90s children's book bad girl, the, the mean girl. can also take notes on your designs like don't don't think that's not allowed don't think you have to have to draw it all out although that it that skews super young so I'm gonna grab let's see what I got is this big enough just about okay so we're gonna lay another piece of tracing paper on top of it. And we're gonna try, let's try Google instead this time. Oh, of course Nordstrom and Niemis, Neiman Marcus would have this. Who am I kidding? Of course. How stupid of me. I'll just switch on back though to Emma's design. And something else I like to do, especially if I've already gone to all the effort of collecting, uh, collecting clothing reference, is I like to make a Pinterest board for my individual projects rather than saving it to my computer, which is kind of what people used to do. And that way, I don't have to be entirely reliant on my sketch to be perfect. And I can also pin alternate outfits in case I change my mind. I'm gonna switch over to Ruby now. Part of the problem is I gave her a really long torso. So anything I, I, I put on her looks kinda, kinda weird. So the tall skirts have been in for like, I don't know, I guess the past couple years. And I am on Nordstrom site under the tween section and 
They have a cute sequin and like tulle ensemble going, so. And I have to make her shirt really long because she's got a longer torso. Like she's got long legs and long torso. And when I was in school, there it was always a problem finding clothes long enough because I have long legs. So everything was always like kind of skirting the, the borderline. And we'll just give her flats. And I kind of can't resist it. I kind of want to give her like the kitty. The kitty stockings, those are really cute. And then like pom-pom hair ties. All right, so far, pretty cute. And I need to look up kids' glasses as well. Let's see what Lens Crafters has. And I have to remember to pin everything. Kinda wish I'd done that on a different layer because it's gonna make seeing her eyes harder. All right, so that is design numero uno for both characters. All right, so we talked about doing an anthro design as well. I have something in mind for Ruby but not necessarily something in mind for Emma. So I will start with Ruby and I'm just gonna design on the side next to her because this isn't necessarily a replacement design, just an alternate design. And I may end up going way more cartoony than that, but this is sort of my base. So I was sort of thinking she's got um, like a curly fro, maybe like a sheep. You also don't see a lot of sheep ampros, so. And I don't normally do a lot of non chibi ampros, so we will see. So I'm gonna change the proportions, and of course, of course I'm good at Google a sheep because always gotta have reference. Oh, sheep are super cute. Uh, Cute. All right, so, so as a human, she's a tall, thin girl. As an anthro, we're gonna work. And then there's always the option, do we wanna do the digigrade legs now? If we're going realistic, if I were doing, say, an anthrocon, I totally would do the digigrade legs, cause that's important. But when it comes to kidlet, I don't really see those kinds of legs a whole lot. So we're gonna go with stockier proportions because we're, we're doing her shorter. So a different, going for a different style here. And again, just because we're trying it doesn't mean we have to go with it. And sheep have hooves. I'm not sure if I wanna, definitely don't wanna give her paws because sheep do not have paws. I'm gonna definitely give her a really cute tail. I'm drawing the arms kind of splayed out like that so I can see them. So it's for design purposes. Now, her shoulders are kind of wide. If we were gonna go anthro, in fact, I think we're gonna have to go with another design, but I'm gonna see this one out. Actually, that's too long. They tend to draw their arms shorter than I normally would. And probably a large head, but though maybe not that large. So anthro for kidlet does not look like anthro for, you know, anthro. All right. So unfortunately, last night I, I ran out of space 
and I had to clear some cards. So picking this up fresh the next day, which is weird because I don't like leaving a character design sort of half done like this. Would not be my choice. So we are doing a sheep. And there's a lot of ways you can you can approach anthro. What seems to be really popular is to make them a bit more human. So you're only taking some of the characters characteristics from the animal. And since this is a rough character design, and I'll probably redo the anthro version a couple of different times. All right, so we've got kind of a rough idea for anthro Ruby. Now we need to come up with one for anthro Emma and I'm just going to do it over here. So we've sort of decided that Emma is shorter than Ruby. So we draw the base figure here. And when I do other iterations of these characters, I'm just going to um, check in with you guys. I'm actually not going to do them on camera because I, I realize that this does end up taking a lot of time. And I'm probably gonna run out of space. Probably just go generic and go with a cat. I'm gonna tape this paper down, it's driving me crazy. So just like with Ruby, we're going, we've got this skeletal form sort of sketched in. And I'm going to work on fleshing it out. And I'm just going to do that off camera since you guys saw the process already with Ruby. Or rather, I guess I'll do it through time lapse. So now that we have the basic skeleton uh, sketched in, I'm just going to go with a fairly faithful interpretation of our current Emma design with the long hair. Now, I don't know that with an anthro character, I would really want long hair down. And if I were designing um, an anthro character in an anthro style, rather than say in a kid lit style. And I don't even think they refer to this as like anthro, but it is what it is um, because it's vaguely humanoid animal characters, hence anthro. Uh, I am going to try it. And then if I don't like it, I'll change the design. And I think for her, I'm just gonna do a t-shirt and some shorts. Well, I kind of, I mean, I want to do the glasses, but I also don't know if there's a particular style I would want to do. Let's just do cat's eye. Why not? And so if I were going to do this in like um, an anthro for anthro style, I would give her paws. But because we're doing anthro for kidlet, I am going to give her hands. Although you can always do the three finger hands instead of the forefinger, a technique brought to us thanks to animation and economy of line. But it also sort of, I like it because um, it's not typically used for humanoid characters. So it's another, it's become sort of like a, at least in Western cultures, like a cultural shorthand for this is an animal character acting like a human. So we've got our anthro-esque, at least our initial anthro designs for Ruby and Emma. And I'm actually going to move these over to another page in my sketchbook. 
thus freeing up these designs so that I can design over them and find a blank page. Just go ahead and I'm actually gonna remove the sides, but I will cut so you guys don't have to see that. All right, so I have finished designing the characters. I'm gonna flip through them. And then tonight we're gonna stand with Joseph and discuss the merits of the designs and select a final one. And that's to demonstrate having a beta reader or um, somebody kind of copy edit your work, help you make a better, stronger decision than you would necessarily make on your own. So these are the base character designs. This is sort of my normal style um, with the two girls. And then we have an anthro iteration. And this is more, even though I said when I was designing it for you guys, it's not really true anthro. It's still more anthro than a lot of kid lit would do. And then here is a redesign in my B style. So it's a lot more cartoony. Things have been simplified. Um, it reads a little more dynamically than this style does. The style reads is a little slower to read. This style is much quicker to read because I've um, cartooned it even more basically. And then finally, we have a more traditional sort of anthro style for Kidlet. And it is pretty similar to the other anthro style I did. Just kind of cartooned in a different way. So we're gonna discuss these tonight. All right, so I have four different iterations of these characters. So um, this is sort of like my generic house style. You've seen me draw a lot of stuff in this style. Um, and then we also talked about doing an anthro option. So that's the first anthro option. Um, and I don't really care for it. What I might, if I went with this, I might um, do like more cartoony eyes than the dots for eyes with this style. Um, like who is who and all these? Oh, uh, so they always stay in the same orientation. So that's <laughs> Emma and that's Ruby. And okay. Emma's the one we discussed as uh, she's the one who's jealous of what Ruby brings. She thinks it's just totally unfair. So she's the one with the guitar and she's the one with the huge cake. Sure. So it, they stay in the same position. Mm -hmm. And then I have um, a more cartoony iteration in my B style. I feel like people would like that. Okay, well, let me, I have one more. And then I have um, a B style with the anthro, which I know it doesn't look a lot different from the other one. That's why I was saying if I went with the other one, I would give them more cartoony eyes than the dots for eyes. Mm -hmm. So you think this is the way to go? Not necessarily. Show me the other yeah. one. So I do definitely like that, but it looks like it's for an older audience. This style? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, would be a kid. This would read as like middle grade or above. Yeah. Um, whereas this reads as like early, like um, easy reader. So like uh, first through fourth. Whereas, so this is more picture book. This is more the picture book demographic and it reads more elementary school yeah. than necessarily. This one does. Mm -hmm. So you think I should go with this one? Yeah, show me first anthro. First anthro. Okay. I'm not really. I'm not super keen on first anthro. Like, if we, if I decided to I go anthro, first anthro, other than for Emma. Sorry, what's her name? Ruby. Ruby. Um, I think she looks better on the other one because she has she has bigger features. Her head looks bigger. I guess is the main thing. What do you mean, though? In the human version? In the second answer version. No, maybe it's not bigger. It might just look bigger. Hmm. If you think I should go anthro still, I can do um, another iter- I don't, I don't want to spend forever designing the characters, but I can do another iteration where I combine the um, cartoony style. I guess I do prefer either a second anthro or a second humanoid. Hmm. Yeah, I so mean- So you said you wanted to have more animal stuff, so why yeah, not do I know. anthro? 
because um, Anthro kind of has its own its own complications, and um, could probably get away with more expressive faces than Anthro. Also, it'd be easier to draw. Well, wouldn't necessarily be easier to draw the class because there are a bunch. I really don't want to have to draw the class more than one time. Yeah. I'm saying you can, you that can is just a lot do it of work. one time. Yeah, it's a lot of work. So, <clears throat> it seems like it would be less work, except they're going to be different animals, and that would and make I got, more well, work. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't really just make them all one kind of animal, because that wouldn't explain why. Well, no, that wouldn't work so for she's Anthro She's a lamb and she's a cat? Yeah. Let's, okay. And there's not really any significance other than I you couldn't think of not. like something cat, cool cat and people then people like lambs and people like Yeah. Cats. They're cute animals. Yeah. That's that's the significance. I mean uh, I have an Axolotl character and I guess I could have subbed her in. But uh, hmm. the problem is people have a harder time some people have a harder time identifying with reptiles and herps. I, I never agree. have. I always liked them, but I've always been warned away from doing stuff with them. Which I feel like that would bring in almost too much for such a short Yeah. Yeah, story. yeah, yeah. If you had a longer story, it would, it would be sense. okay. Because yeah. like, I feel like them being a reptile, because that is unusual, would be able to play into the theme of the sure, entire story. Sure. But with just one illustration or a couple yeah. of sequential illustrations or whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't feel like there's any room to expand on that. Well, my concern is also when it comes to Kidlet, um, other than Gizmo Grandma, I don't really have a lot of experience with Anthro in terms of Kidlet. Like growing up, I had some, I had like Frog and Toad were friends, which is like a big one that everybody read. Um, and I had like Animalia and I had the 11th Hour, which is like a detective story with Anthro animal, but they're more an they're more like animals in clothing than like Anthro's where you have like a human. Yeah. And like, okay, like the Richard Scary books definitely are all Anthro, but they're like all built like teddy bears. You know what I mean? So they all have like a generic base body and then an animal head, which yeah. is, I mean, this is more like a generic kid body and then an animal head. And I don't know how well that will be. I mean, I do well, like, need what are more some animal stuff. Anthro cartoons? But is this Anthro and not like Chip and Dale? That's most of the Peppa Pig. Ducktails? I guess they're not that Anthro. They're just animals. SpongeBob SquarePants? Are they just animals or are they animals? That's. I don't know, because SpongeBob's like a sponge, like a well, kitchen yeah, sponge. But those you know, like they take. A lot of liberties with that. Anthros, right? Or are they just animals? I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I just kind of want to avoid doing anthro for this. Because, like, clearly I haven't done enough research in the kidlet animal slash anthro drawing market to really know what they do. So I think I'm Sorry, right. are you doing this for kids or are you doing this for judges of kid stuff? Judges of kid stuff. Right. Um, I, so what? Is, how would they feel about anthro? Is That's another question. thing. I think kids would like this. Yeah. I don't think adults will like this. Right. Even with, if they're trying to think of what mm -hmm. kids. With the B style I have, I think kids will like this less, but they'll still like it. And mm -hmm. I think adults will like it more. And when you're doing kid lit, you're selling to parents. I feel like this has the potential to appeal to older people as well, though, whereas Anthro's probably has less potential to appeal to older people, is my guess, anyway. Yeah. And again, there's like animal mascots and video games that. But those have a very specific people. look. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna go with this, even though we did discuss more animals in my portfolio, and I'll just have to focus on doing more animals in a different venue. Yeah. She also just looks like she plays guitar. She yeah. definitely did good on her design. And actually, I think the first one, re she really she looks, also like, looks she like she looks too cool. Torn she's too cool. She 
What and do you she, mean too? Like she's too cool to be like a real fourth grader. Like she's clearly someone dressed her. Sure. Whereas this one, she maybe she dressed. You can believe that she picked that out for herself. This is like very put together. You know, and it is because I, I picked it off the Target. Target has like outfits now, so you can just like be like, oh, that looks really cute, and get it all together. So that's what oh, I did we for her. The other girl wearing Target. No, she wears Nordstrom. Oh, okay. I forgot. She's Hyun Yeah. And she's. She's the one with the rich taste. Yeah. She's the one with, with like normal class. taste. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you no, know, I I took I took that into account. Whereas with this, it's it's um. Simplify. I still gave her the cat stock, the cat leggings, because I thought that's really a really cute touch. Um, and I totally would have worn cat stockings. I you own I, cat yeah, stockings. I own cat stockings, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this. Also, because um, Robin Chapman from First Second is gonna be there, so I want to kind of like hedge my bets because I First Second does some Just tweet at her and ask her which Oh you my use. god, no, I'll die. <laughs> um but I feel like this is a better gamble. See, it's always weird too because Jeremy like Jeremy talks to a lot of middle graders, right? Does he know what are you targeting boys or girls or both? I well, considering the two main characters are female it's going to be a book just like knowing what the book is about. And despite me thinking it is a book for every kid, mm -hmm. it's going to skip parents of girls are more likely to buy it than parents of boys. Okay. And I've certainly seen that firsthand with Kara where it's Kara is totally not just Your a little bodies. girl book. Yeah. Um, and so many parents are like that's for little girls. And it's like, really? All right. So like knowing that it doesn't, I don't, I don't really get much choice in how it skews. However, this might be more neutral than this. I don't know. You mean gender neutral? I think this you is You think more this gender is more neutral. gender neutral? Yeah. Than this? Mm-hmm. Because that looks more girly. Hmm. I can't help that. Um, well, I mean, I, I could really try to fight it, but, you know, my natural... Well, yeah, your style is just kind of girly. Yeah. Mostly because you draw girls on that. Hey. <laughs> mostly because I am a girl, and there wasn't much yeah. for girls when I was a girl. So it's important to me to really try to make more for girls. And I can't help that, like, there's a whole other generation of women who want to do the exact same thing I'm doing. So there's, like, a lot of us competing for very few jobs right now. Which sucks. No one's having a girly style. No. Um... I think I might go with this anyway, though, because um, I don't have a lot of comic stuff in this sort of B style. Mm -hmm. Like, this is sort of the same style I did for Favorite Fictional Femmes. Yeah, I remember. Um, and I really like the style. And whenever I think oh, about... Wait, I was thinking you were talking about Ladies Night and about. No. Didn't that kind of look like it? It looked more like this. Mm, okay, you have to say so. Um, but whenever... I am thinking about kids' comics that I'm pitching. I always try to think about, like, um, especially if it's, like, a retelling, and so this would be, like, a retelling. I always think of how, like, Raina Telgemeier handled the Babysitter's Club, um, where, like, there's a lot of economy of line, and you try to make the characters have very distinct clothing, and you try to keep it spare so you can just... Yeah. You know, you're not constantly drawing all these tiny little details. It sounds more like it's... For advice for animators rather than advice for comic artists. It seems like the joy of being a comic artist is you can do that. You, yeah, you, you can, can really you can, that. but do you want to spend, is it worthwhile? Is it going to make for a better comic? I mean, I already do that with Kara. Yeah, that's true. So I don't need enough, I don't need another comic where I'm, I'm putting in a lot of detail that doesn't necessarily add. Yeah, well, I agree. The, the, B style. B style better. Sorry, I wasn't trying to like bully you into agreeing with me. I actually came into this with like I liked the style a lot. Mm -hmm. I just was like good. time I wise. Just don't think it necessarily matches. Because last audience. last year I did that mermaid piece mm -hmm. in my normal style. Yeah, it looked good. I liked it a lot. I think it's beautiful, but nobody said anything to me about it at all. Hmm. Nothing. Which is rough. Because like no no feedback, 
I don't have a clue. So um, I'm going to try something new this year, see if maybe it resonates a little bit better. I mean, when you're dealing with no feedback at all, there's not really, you don't, you know, you don't know whether to scrap everything and try again or like, hey, you're on a good track. You just don't know. So, so how is it going to work? Is it going to be like three tiers on the left? And I don't know yet. I'm right. going to do, I'm going to do that on a video. I'm going to, I have not started them. That's why I was like, we need to record this because I got another one to record. Right. Okay. So thank you so much. That was super helpful. I'm going to go with the be human style, I think, um, as per your advice. And now I have another consideration. Do you think I should? And they don't specify that it has to. How? <sighs> They don't specify that it has to be in color. Um, do you think I should do this? So what I was sort of thinking think is it would look good in black either and black white. and white, except I did the Cicada Summer pages. So I'm going to have pages in my portfolio that are black and white. Okay. What I was thinking I might do is ink and then one layer of color. Yeah. I think that would, because I don't have anything like that. I mean, I've done stuff like that, but I don't have any comic work like that. I think it would look really so good. When you say one layer of color, you don't mean spot color, you mean not layered watercolor? Yeah. Okay. Not, markers? No, I would do watercolor. Okay. Yeah, sure. Saturated, I assume? Yeah, full full saturation. Like, what I meant by that? The color it's supposed to be. Stuff. Yeah, I was going to go bright. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I think, I think it'll look good. I hope it'll look good. If it doesn't look good, you know, it, that's I paid $15 to enter the contest. I can always not enter it. But I would like to. Character designs. Yeah, really. Actually, considering it's uh, a children's book and I don't have to do a comic, if I, if I botch it, I might just do a standalone, a single illustration. And plus, you can turn in digital stuff, so... Theoretically, worst case scenario, goes completely foobar. I pick one panel I like, scan it at like 12,000 DPI, print it out at full size, and be like, I'm done, it's great. <laughs> so, I mean, there's always ways to like, I shouldn't be like worst case scenario, scenarioing this, yeah, but there's always ways to solve problems.